Hello, so this video is going to be on the mains water supply to a koi pond and show you what you should do or what I think you should do with your water and uh, the techniques and practices that I use to try and keep my water good for the fish at least. So one thing, one thing that you get with a koi pond is a build up of ammonia obviously because there's fish in the water and they're producing waste and that. Then the ammonia gets turned into nitrite by your filtration system, that's what that primarily does. And um, then, then from there it gets turned into nitrate. Well, when ammonia is pretty easy to work out, so this system, we in a day could, of a brand new system, this system in a day could produce the bacteria to start filtering out ammonia. That's not a problem for me anyway. But when but nitrite is a problem that does take longer and it, it doesn't have much of a effect on your fish as ammonia does because ammonia burns them but nitrate has more of a long term effect on your fish so high levels of nitrate can really damage your fish and then nitrate gets turned into nitrate which is less harmful but still not something you want plentiful in your pond because nitrate is what blanket weed and plants feed on and uh, the stuff that makes your pond go like pea soup. So if you have high levels of nitrate in your pond, that's why your water will turn to pea soup. So one of the reasons, one of the things to do to combat that sort of thing is to let a fresh water trickle into your pond all the time, and uh, it reduces the levels of the ammonia, nitrate, and nitrite in your pond, and. Uh, as it, as it keeps the water circulating fresh. So what I do is I have a trickle in this filter. This filter is the main filter for the uh, main pond. So you can just see it's not much of a trickle. Now this is a 41,000 litre 9,000 gallon pond. So what you're looking for is 10% of that a week. So you want to change 10% of your water a week through a trickle. And you can just see it doesn't look like much trickling in, but it's more. It can be deceiving, I think. If I'm trying to get, get the trickle on there, right? yeah, right there we go. Let me have a finger. See how much is going in. It's about. It is about 10% of that a week. And then obviously this is my quarantine tank here. Put some fish in there. Oops. And then. If you can see that one, oh, this one's trickling in more actually because a bit bigger fish and the, there's more of a uh, risk of these fish having issues like that. So there you can see it. There we go. Obviously, the size of these fish, comparable to the size of the tank, is quite big. So the more water I have flowing in it, the better it's going to be for fish. Right then, so that's the water trickling in, which is constant and never stops. So what I do here is, this is where the water comes in from the street, as such, and then it comes through my meter, so you can see that my meter is always turning like that, just a little bit, just spinning away slowly. And then it goes through this, which is a dechlorinator, this stage here is a f filter, just a, I think it's like 10 micron or something like that, I can't quite remember, it could be 15 uh, micron filter, like a um, paper towel sort of thing in there. And then these two are both carbon filters which remove your chlorine from your water. So the first one to remove the first lot and then the second lot to remove the remainder. Um, some, some don't have the second one, it's just one and two, but in this case I found it more s secure to have two. Especially because I can at some points have large amounts of water flowing through them. As is when I clean my bead filter and the water level drops, my solenoid valve will open and that will just let water flow straight into the pond unrestricted. So it's best to, uh, for me anyway, to have as much filtration prior to that as possible. Now what a lot of people do and a lot of older koi keepers will say to you is um, they'll say just spray your water into the air that will remove the chlorine and that's true that does remove chlorine because chlorine is unstable but the problem is is 
there's that many houses now in, in the, the houses are that far away from the pumping station that those houses actually wouldn't get any chlorine in their systems so what happens is the chlorine so they need to stabilize the chlorine so that people right at the end of the systems don't end up with stagnant water so what they use to do that is ammonia so they do what is called chloramine so chloramine is not unstable it's to stabilize chlorine so by spraying it in the air it makes no difference you still got chlorine chlorine in the water chloramine um, so it's, a, it's best to use a dechlorinator like the one downstairs now because the dechlorinator does remove chloramine and chlorine and will make sure your fish don't have any problem with that and chlorine does kill and burn fish as um, will become apparent especially if, if you do put chlorine in your water your fish will be really unhappy they'll be trying to go up um, trying to Float, they'll be always trying to swim up your pumping outlets and all that sort of thing and it's, it's not pretty, it can kill them and it's a terrible death and uh, it kills them by suffocating them because chlorine replaces oxygen in the blood supply so there you go, that's, that's the reason why I'm trickling in but also another reason for trickling in is a reason that you can't test for and you can't see and that reason is, is that these fish in this pond here now are all communicating how fish communicate which is by hormones and by releasing chemicals into water so if a fish is egg, you know, if a fish has got eggs and it tells all the males in that pond that it's got eggs by releasing a chemical and then that gets them all excited and all that and uh, but if you don't change your water, then chemicals all, them hormones and chemicals all stay in your water, in your pond's water, and they all sort of fester, as you will, and that can be really stressful for your fish because there'll be so much going on all the time, and it doesn't make sense to them as such. Um, so that can be really stressful and cause other problems for your fish. So that's another reason to let water trickle into your pond all the time. So that's that's about it really. So you just got to uh, obviously one of the problems with trickling in. I'll just show you this system. This is where my water comes in from that filter. It goes in here and then it goes around this coil here. And you see, and then it goes in and then it goes out there. And then there's some fans. There and there. And what this does is it draws the hot air of the building over this coil full of water, it's a 50 metre coil, and then it heats the water up with the air in the building and it also condenses any water so it's like a, a dehumidifier so it does me two jobs. And then the water comes out of it, runs into the basement and runs to the quarantine tank and the drum filter that feeds the main pond. Uh, the cold, my favourite bit about that is I had a lot of trouble stabilising the temperature of the quarantine tank with the trittling. Um, I could find that it would go really cold in winter and drop really quick because it's a small volume of water. It would follow what the temperature of the water is coming out of the taps. Whereas this pond, as you can see earlier from earlier, it was flowing in quite fast and the pond is currently at... 20.3 degrees and there's no heating on it whereas if I didn't have that heater on it like that it would be much slower but obviously for an outdoor pond that won't ma that won't matter that's just just one of my uh, issues that I have with an indoor koi pond that uh, runs all year at high temperatures so there you go that's a brief bit of information about uh, fresh water going into your koi pond and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, any questions please comment below, thank you.